I am here at Solid 2014 in San Francisco with Alex Saunders from BlackBerry QNX. Hi, how's it going, John? Very well, thanks. How are you? Good. So uh, tell me about what you're working on. So today we announced uh, something called Project Ion, which is a series of initiatives at BlackBerry and QNX um, to really make it simple and easy for businesses to realize Internet of Things visions. Um, and so um, uh, there are really three components to it. Um, there's some technology stuff that we showed up on stage today. Uh, we're also talking about partnerships that we want to enable um, and an ecosystem that we want to build around that. Um, the technology uh, that we showed on stage was um, uh, a demonstration of some concepts that we've been building. Um, it's a cloud-based system that allows uh, businesses to be able to quickly gather data from devices that are in the field um, and then produce meaningful analytics, uh, meaningful dia um, uh, analysis of what it is that they've actually collected. So um, QNX is in all sorts of things yeah. already, right? And has been for a long time. Cars, yeah. power plants, yeah. everything, embedded, everything. Um, so this, this new addition um, adds the ability to sort of speak back over the network into a cloud service and return information that, that can be used to sort of optimize things and understand operations? Yeah, I mean, it, so, so QNX has been around for 30 odd years at this point. Um, and we've been building uh, embedded uh, systems with our customers for all of that time. And what we started to see was that about 10 years ago, they were starting to connect these things back up uh, to IT systems in order to be able to you know, build interesting applications that were designed to optimize business processes or for routing um, you know, or for logistics, those kinds of things. And now what's happening is, um, uh, and it's particularly fitting and solid, right? right. We're seeing uh, um, the same businesses, they're connecting up the devices, but for different reasons. It's the marketing mm -hmm. teams and it's the product teams that are driving that. And the information that's coming from them can be used in all kinds of different ways. Um, so in some cases, it's information that can be used for status or diagnostics. In other cases, in aggregate, the information can provide some useful piece of information. Right. Um, so for example, uh, um, I made the observation a couple of weeks ago to one of our automotive customers that, you know, your cars are on every road, in every city, in every state, in every country in the world. You actually know where all the potholes are. <laughs> right, that right, has right. value, right? Yeah, yeah. You could sell that data to somebody else. And so I think that all of these different uh, uh, points where um, devices are being connected in and where uh, data is being gathered provide opportunity to do things in a new and a different way. And the fact that all of these things are being connected is going to change the way that we do business. Right, right. And so is the magic happening on the device in the embedded system or in the cloud uh, where it gets analyzed? Uh, in both places. Uh, well, the analysis doesn't happen on uh, the device necessarily, but um, the magic is in getting the data. Because I mean, if you're talking about um, data innovation, if you're talking about big data, well, the big challenge is getting the data into the cloud yeah, in the first yeah. place, right? Um, so part of Project Ion is a, a set of agent uh, components that live on the devices and that are able to pass data back to them. And we'll be providing those as a reference implementation on QNIX, on Linux, hmm. uh, a C language library that's portable to any operating system you like, and if you care to, a set of protocol level API implementations that you can then use to instrument any device you want. Right, right. Parse the data, you send it back to the cloud, and depending on what your particular uh, bent is, you may analyze it in the cloud or you may do some analysis on the device side before sending it onto the cloud. Some of our customers huh. want to minimize the amount of traffic that's going across. Uh, the network connection and others are saying, hey, you know what, just give me the fire hose. Give right, it all to right, me. Right. I'll do the analysis on the back end of my Hadoop system. Right. right? But the flexibility is important because it's so different if you're a home appliance and you have a, access to a, a, you know, a wired internet connection versus if you're a car and you're using a cellular connection in, in rural areas or something. Yeah, you bet. Although, I will say this, um, a lot of the carriers that we've been speaking with are now starting to recognize that the Internet of Things is something that's brand new and it's a market that they can expand into pretty easily. And so they're offering some pretty innovative data plans, some of them are, hmm. where you know, they charge only for very small amounts of data going across. Or if you're in a remote area, the SIM comes on for only a short period of time, enough to enable a burst of data, and that's it. Right, right, right. So, and how does this fit in with the rest of BlackBerry, what you all are doing there? Well, broadly, BlackBerry is very interested in the Internet of Things. Yeah. I mean, you've heard John Chen speak about this repeatedly recently. Um, and there are a whole series of initiatives going on inside the company today that are about the Internet of Things mm -hmm. um, in various different places. And so for 
Um, this particular uh, exercise for Project Ion, it's about connecting up multiple devices uh, to a, an at-scale cloud, and I emphasize at-scale because there's going to be a vast amount of data coming back here, right. um, and enabling an ecosystem of partners around that. Yeah, and, and uh, how, how have you approached building out this cloud with kind of a machine data in mind? I mean, that's, that's a completely new scale of data that a lot of people are dealing with, Yeah, right? yeah well, and it's, it's a really good question um, because, uh, you know, people talk a lot about 50 billion devices yeah. by the year 2020. And then 50 billion devices by 2020 are going to be generating trillions of uh, machine transactions and exabytes of data that need to be contained somewhere. So um, we have used liberally from the open source community um, that has been pioneered by social networks in recent years. Hmm. Um, you know, some of the largest uh, um, applications that are on the planet are in the social networking arena. Yeah. Um, things like LinkedIn and Facebook and so on. And so our database is Cassandra. Okay. It lets us uh, very quickly and easily scale. It's optimized for the right case as right. opposed to the read-write case. Um, we've got Kafka in there, which comes from LinkedIn, which lets us then take the data and pipe it into mm -hmm. uh, a data store like Hadoop for analysis later on, and Solar for uh, searching it, and a fantastic project called Vertex, uh, which, is, uh, which gives us a polyglot uh, approach for uh, uh, programming the business logic. So we've been doing those kinds of things, and we're building it uh, with technologies that are known and provable to scale. Right, right, right. And that's important to a lot of these applications, industrial applications. I mean, people start to develop things that they imagine might work in industrial applications, and then they turn out to be not nearly robust enough for these kinds of things, right? Yep. There's that part of it. There's the robustness part of it. There's the scale part of it. Um, I think a, a very real problem is uh, what data scientists refer to as the sampling problem. Mm. Um, you know, for example, uh, pipelines, um, it's important to optimize the viscosity of mm -hmm. the fluid flowing through the pipeline. Why? Because that is a delivery system. If you can get the viscosity right, you can increase throughput by 15%. Sure. That's money. Yeah. And how often do you sample to understand whether or not you've got the viscosity right? Right. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sample a lot and save a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. Sample a lot and save a lot of money. Sample a lot and spend a lot of money on data. <laughs> right. 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 <laughs> That's the problem to fix. So. Yeah. So. Great. Well, thank you so much, Alec. It's thank been a you. Pleasure. Appreciate it. Cheers.